It is just about six o'clock in the morning. We've got a two hour drive ahead of us to get to Philly. So we're gonna get there a little early, film some stuff, maybe do some trading and register for this tournament. All right, just got into Philly, gonna go register, get entry packs, meet up to get some cards and do some more filming. All right, just got registered for the event, got our entry packs. I don't think I've said it yet, but we are playing Centurion today, Pure Centurion. Probably gonna be nine or 10 rounds. I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna see if I can find some place to open these packs and then uh, get going on the day. Just finished up round one, massive tournament. They capped at 650, 10 rounds of Swiss. We didn't start until 11, we're supposed to start at 10, but we got round one against Orcus Pearly. Game one, they completely bricked. Game two, I had Jerusalem Super Poly, was able to clear their board out, put them on top deck and they just didn't have it. So we're X XO through <laughs> round one, hoping to keep the good vibes going. All right, just finished up round three. We lost the mirror. Uh, the guy was really cool to play with. It was a lot of fun. The decks are interesting to play. We're now X1. We've got a very short break in between rounds three and four. We're gonna get some caffeine and then get back at it. Just finished up round five. We won. We're currently 3-2. X3 has a chance of getting the invite, so we stay in until we're X4, I think. Got a couple trades for the Starlight Challenge. Now, um, just playing it out. The last match was really fast. We got a lot of time in between. final update we just finished round nine we're officially x4 so obviously not an invite worthy performance but still a better performance than i've had recently at major events i at least was playing to potentially be in the top 64 in the last few rounds the deck performed really well only like one or two like terribly bricky hands the entire day so i had a lot of fun it was definitely worth coming out for Hey guys, so we're back from the regional. We've taken a night to rest, catch up from the long day that was yesterday. I just want to talk about regionals real quick and then go over the rounds really quickly before a deck profile. I know a lot of people are nervous to go to regionals. If you've never been for, I would highly encourage anyone to go. Really, it's kind of like a big locals, like even the Philly regional, uh, there were 650 people. Yeah, there were some pro players there. There were a lot of big names. But the average person you play against is the average player you're going to play against in locals. And the skill level isn't that much different unless you're like really doing well towards the end and you're at top tables. So if you're nervous about going to play, I would definitely say go do it. Uh, get the experience in the tournament. That's the big thing, right? No expectations for your first regional. Just go play. Get the practice in. Get the nerves out. And really enjoy yourself because it's a lot of fun. 99% of the people that I've met at regionals are super cool, very nice to play with, not rude at all. So generally it's a really good experience and it's something that you should definitely get under your belt. So going over our rounds, in round one I played against Pearly Orcist. I really only saw the Pearly engine in this matchup, we did end up 2-0ing them. 
but we did see some Orcus cards get revealed off of the Pearly effect. So there were Orcus cards in there, they just never came up. They bricked game one and game two, I was able to out their board enough that they were on top deck and they just couldn't do anything through the Little Knight. Round two, we played against Adventure, Horus, Orcus. A lot of engines in that deck, it was fun to play against. They were able to stop the Calamity Lock game one after I won the die roll, but we had enough uh, non-engine in hand as well as engine to continue going and end their turn. Game two, they went first and I wasn't able to break their board. Game three, we did successfully Calamity Lock them. The Calamity Lock only came up probably like four times the entire tournament, honestly. The deck can play without it. You have a ton of hand traps. You have a ton of resources that continue to recur themselves. But if the Calamity Lock comes up, obviously it can end the turn. Round three, we had the mirror match. The guy was super cool to play against. He won game one, I won game two. Game three, I decided to make him go first because I felt like I would have enough non-engine to keep him from playing, but we just weren't able to, we didn't get enough engine ourselves to play through his interruptions. Round four was against Manadium, and this was a tough match for me personally because it was shortly after the lunch break that we had and I just did not play very clearly. There were more than a couple plays that I look back at and I'm like, what were you thinking when you did that? So we kind of punted that round away and had to go into round five uh, at a 2-2 record. In round five, we ended up playing against Manadium again. They didn't draw super well either of the games and we had enough to slow them down and then kill them on our turn. Round six was against another Manadium player. They bricked super hard both games. It was, we had Droll in both of them as well, so it was enough to just really seal the deal. In round seven, we actually ended up playing against one of the homies. It was super fun to see him, but you hate to see him that late in the tournament. He was playing Heroes, and unfortunately for him, we saw Super Poly and Bestials in both of the games, so we were able to play through his board pretty easily, send us into round eight with a six and two record. Round eight was really tough. We played against Labyrinth. It was a matchup we were kind of hoping to dodge all day, and we did for the most part. We ended up losing game one. There were potentially some plays that I could have made that would have been better, but I'm not sure if it would have saved me. Game two, we actually went first and ended up taking it. The Cosmic Blazar Dragon is really good in this matchup. And then game three, we were going into time. We dealt 4,000 damage, passed to them. They went into Typhon got rid of our little knight, we just needed to see a starter, Primera, or Trudea to play, and we'd probably win that, but we didn't see it. Our top decks were like Emmett and Ash, so it just wasn't enough. Not our day, unfortunately, so we lost that round. I stayed in for one more round because X3 could technically end up being top 64, but then in round nine, we ended up going against a pure Snake Eyes deck. Uh, he won the die roll and set up a board. My hand was like, Triple Oath, Double Trudea, and Emmet, I believe. So I couldn't interrupt him at all. I couldn't play into his board, really. So instead of showing him what deck I was on, I scooped and decided to make him guess into the siding. Game two, we did our full Centurion combo. It's not super complicated, right? Uh, and then on his turn, we went to Calamity Lock him, but he was main deck in Cosmic Cyclone, apparently. So our field spell got outed, and we didn't have any real way to play on his turn at that point. So we ended up dropping that match. That was when I dropped out of the tournament. Overall, the deck performed super well. I'm really happy with how it performed. There was like maybe one hand that was completely unplayable the entire day. There was a lot of Centurion in the room, surprisingly, like a lot of Centurion. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to regionals that it's a deck that's getting pretty popular. So what I'm gonna do now is just do a really quick deck profile of the deck that we played and maybe some of the choices that we made as far as the main deck and the side deck. So for the deck list, it's pretty standard. The thing I like about Centurion is the engine's very small at the moment, so you can just play your full Centurion engine and then have tons of flex bots to tailor the deck to exactly what format or tournament you might be playing in. To start, we played three copies of Centurion Primera. This is your main starter, obviously, at any Centurion card from deck to hand. We played three copies of Trudea. This is another starter and possibly an extender, depending on what the rest of your hand looks like. We played two copies of Emmet. Those are all of the uh, Centurion main deck monsters. Emmet helps you play on your opponent's turn a little bit. It's not ideal to always see in your opening hand, but you can play with it depending on what the rest of the hand looks like. For the rest of the Centurion lineup, we played three copies of Stand Up. This again is another starter and it also allows you to play on your opponent's turn. We played 
three copies of Oath. These are all pretty mandatory ratios. Oath can be a starter or an extender, depending on what your hand looks like. And then we played the one century on Phalanx. We decided not to play Bonds for this tournament. I don't necessarily know if I missed it or not, but it didn't feel like it was completely necessary in the deck. For generic spells, we played one copy of Called by the Grave, one copy of Terraforming to help get you to your field spell. We played two copies of Triple Tactics Talent, three copies of Super Poly. This was great all day, and I think that this is gonna be great going into the next format as well. We played three copies of Desires. Ideally, you can draw into a starter if you need it, or you can end your combo and draw into more hand traps if you need those. This was kind of glued to my hand all day. Some hands I had double and it wasn't ideal, but I don't know if dropping it down to two is really the best idea. I'll have to keep testing it maybe at two and see how that feels. For the hand traps, we played three Ash, three Valor, we decided to main deck the three droll and Lockbird. I think that a lot of decks get hurt by this, this format. You're kind of punting your lab matchup by having it in there, but realistically, we'd probably be maining Nib anyway. So I think that this is a good card to have in the main deck. If you're not maining it, you need to at least be siding it. We did play a Bestial package. This can be a hand trap against certain decks, like it came up in my hero matchup a lot but it's also a way to quick synchro into Baron on your opponent's turn. So I think that these are kind of mandatory in the deck, honestly, in my opinion. And then the last hand trap that we played was three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Like I said, I kept the hand traps pretty generic because it was a big tournament and they all seemed to work out pretty well for most of the day. Now for the extra deck, we played two copies of Legatia. I don't think I see very many deck lists playing three copies of this. I don't think you really need it, but two is definitely mandatory. It can be a pop and draw on your opponent's turn, or it's your Crimson Dragon target, which obviously we are playing the Crimson Dragon, with the targets being Red, uh, Red Dragon, <laughs> Archfiend King Calamity, and Cosmic Blazar. The Blazar Dragon's really nice for matchups like Labyrinth, where Calamity doesn't do a whole lot of work, and the fact that it continues to recur itself is pretty amazing. The other synchros we played were one copy of Baron Floor, one copy of Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. This card comes up in time, this card comes up for clearing your opponent's boards, so I think that it's something that you should probably be playing if you're not playing it already. For Link Monsters, we played one copy of SP Little Knight because that's all I have and I think you don't really need more than one in this deck. We played Dark Charmer because we have the Bestials, and then we played Selene and Access Code. This line doesn't come up very often, but it did come up in my first match of the day actually and helped me clear the pearly board out. So it's something that I think that you should at least think about having in your deck if you don't already. We did play the one Typhon. This is really important in today's meta, especially if your plays get stopped and then you don't really have many, very many options. You can at least go into Typhon and hope that it's enough to make it to your next turn. And then for super poly targets, we played the Mud Dragon, we played the Garura, and then we played the Dragon Knight Draco Exquisite. This card is specifically for the Menadio matchup. They almost always end on Baron de Floor and Dispatter, and this card is a super poly target that clears that board out. So if you don't see your Droll, but you see super poly, there's a good chance you can still break that Menadium board. And then finally, for our side deck, we played three copies of DD Crow. This made it into the side deck specifically because Transaction Rollback is a card and I wanted to be able to fight it if I needed to. It didn't really come up as far as hitting Transaction Rollback. I did use it in the lab matchup to hit the like Ku Clock or whatever furniture was coming back. But in theory, that's basically what this is for. It hits other things in the meta, but it's a lot, a lot of times really just for Transaction Rollback. We played three Ghost Bell. This is for the lab matchup. It's a tough matchup for us, so having the bell helps out a lot. Again, it hits some other random decks in the meta, but it's mostly for the Labyrinth matchup. We played three Cosmic Cyclone. I think this card's really good, this format. It hits um, Fire Kings, it hits Centurion, which we saw a lot of, and then it can hit some random Floodgates if you need it to. So this is my back row removal of choice for the format. Played three Nibiru doesn't really need to be explained. Combo decks get hit by Nib, especially if you have another hand trap with it. And lastly, we had three evenly matched. 
I like the evenly matched because not a lot of decks are putting up Omni Gates right now. So you clear their board out, then you go into your turn, build your board, and then Clem and you lock them on their next turn. So that's it for the deck profile. Like I said, the deck performed really well this weekend. I'm happy with the list pretty much. I just need to get some more testing in with it, I think. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe, right? And I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks. Thank you.